Welcome everyone. I am your host, Lizette Marais, and welcome to another episode of the Wholeness Wisdom Well. I am so excited to welcome Rachel White with us today. Welcome, Rachel. Hi, everyone. It's so <laughs> lovely to be here. Thank you for thank you for having me, Lizette. Absolutely, hon. Rachel is going to be one of the 12 masters that I've um, collected for the collective, or she's joining the collective, this 12-month membership and mentorship journey uh, into really embodying our wholeness and uh, anchoring that in the earth. Rachel, I'd love just to start with your bio, just to kind of introduce what you do in the world, and I cannot wait to kind of unpack how you got here. Um, and what this magic and modality is that you have to share with us all. So Rachel is a, is a world-renowned sound healer, an energy healer, a spiritual channel, and works with purpose-driven, high-achieving professionals and leaders who are ready to unleash their full potential and power so they can fulfill their desires and have the massive contributions they're here to make. She combines her beautiful trained operatic and classical voice with her remarkable healing gifts and uses the power of sound, energy and intuition to reach deep into a person's soul to discover what stories, traumas and emotions have become trapped in her body or in their body. Such beautiful, beautiful work, Rachel. Yes. But you didn't always do this. So I'm can you? <laughs> <laughs> So as of every phenomenal, great story, let us begin at the yeah. beginning. When, sure. where did this, um, where did this start for you? Wow. Well, I guess it started with me training as a classical singer. Mm -hmm. That started in my, I would say like my late teens, sort of 16, 17, 18, that, that age I started singing. I had no, I had no up until that point at all idea about spirituality, gifts, anything along along that route. That that world was was pretty close to me actually. But I did start training as a singer as a very as quite a young age, and I went through that singing world um, up until my late twenties. So I sang in operas. I trained um, at music conservatoire. I lived in France for a year and trained out there. So that was the that was that was I would say that was the start of everything. Although at that time I didn't know that this what I do now is how I was going to be using my voice. I thought I would be you know, an opera singer, I was going to, be right. on, you know, that's, that's what I thought. Um, so that, that is how, that is how it all began. Beautiful. Yeah. And when, and when, um, when did it start morphing into something else? When did you know this is not the way? What happened? Yeah. So it happened quite, quite diff it happened in actually in if initially it was quite traumatic for me so <laughs> i was i went to in my late 20s i went to music college um sort of a postgraduate training in opera singing classical singing and i actually found that that world dimmed my light and actually the the what what i couldn't cope with at that age in my life was the criticism was the rejection was the you know the 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 other people, you know, there's a lot of, um, I suppose there were a lot of egos there that I didn't really understand much about it at the time, but I found that world really hard and it probably wasn't the world for me. And the only way for me to cope with that, with the rejection, with the, this isn't right, this is wrong, um, was to actually shut, I actually found myself shutting my voice down and using it less and less and not wanting to sing in case someone said something wrong or not wanting to audition for things in case I got rejected. It was it was quite a difficult time for me. And actually what I ended up doing from all of that was to say, I'm done with this. I'm not using my voice again. I'm I'm actually taking myself out of this world and shut I actually remember saying I'm just never going to sing. I'm not going to sing again. And I'm going to shut that down. It is so powerful. And for all the women, I just want to stop here for a minute because we know the story has a happy ending, right? Yes. Yes. But for all of those that are in that moment where we have dedicated ourselves to a certain profession, a certain career, a certain dream, a certain idea, and then we start becoming sensitive that, uh oh, it's not what I thought. I had this in my corporate career, 15 years of working 
very hard, getting promoted every eight, 18 months, a fabulous career, got to the top and realized, I hate it here. It's all about politics. It's, it's not about, and I've learned to navigate politics, but it's so incredible that for those that are in that moment, sometimes they don't see that mm -hmm. there is the next chapter. And I just wanna say to all these beautiful women out there, I promise you, there is, and it was never a waste of time. No, that is, gosh, as you say that, that resonates deeper with me because there's one other thing that I don't always share about what happened with me at a music college. Mm -hmm. I feel I need to share on this. Please and that me. is actually, because it's something hard for me to still admit and I can get emotional about it. Um, I, towards the end of my two years there, we have to, we had to do a final recital, sort of a, a big performance come out and, you know, the ball down and perform and we get marked on it. And I remember coming out that day and I was not, it, it, something in me just shut down and my voice clamped up. It was very difficult for me. Um, and I actually received, I failed it. I failed it. I failed it and that was the hardest thing for me to have to 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 overcome that I'd failed something and and it was there was a lot of shame there was a lot of guilt there was a lot of I've just spent all this money here two years what was it for my family you know having to see their sadness that I'd failed at something yeah it was a really difficult time you know even as you're sharing this I see more and more reasons of why um and what you're going to be bringing to this collective, my sweet, because yeah. even, even in this interview, we're starting to unpack these themes of yeah. when, when soul says no, and it feels like we failed, or it looks like we failed. Yeah. And, and, and that is the reality, right? I failed the grade, but did you yeah. fail? And what I found that spirit is always doing is saying, whenever we fail, it's actually teaching us not that way. It's not that way. Yeah. Uh, and even the, the deep energies of shame, of it's almost as if life is allowing that to happen so that stuff can come out. Now, you and I both as healers know yes. that we can transform everything. <laughs> so you become more and more confident that those things uh, do not have to be the end game, but because you're yeah. empowered to do it. Yeah. You're empowered to move through. I love that you're still emotional love. And all that tells me is that there's just a few... Uh, maybe elements still to clear. Yeah, yeah, that's a lot better. I mean, for many, I couldn't <laughs> tell anybody, you know, I couldn't, I wouldn't even admit to anybody that that, that that had happened. So here I am now on a live podcast, able to talk about it, knowing that um, me sharing this, this failure is not, you, you never fail at anything. You it's, just learn from it. And, and that's, so, you know, that's an important message to share. We always say hindsight is twenty twenty, right? Because when yeah. we get there, and we look back and we say, oh, that's how all the pieces fit. But yeah. we don't get to see the whole puzzle sometimes. No. Um, and on many times when I'm in a journey with people, we know that we are homeless. That is the nature of, of, of the energy that is so present for all of us to tap into. But we sometimes get stuck as, oh my God, this is a big thing. And it was a big thing because it broke something yeah. open for something yeah. new to be born. Yes. So what was born next, my love? What was born next? So I have to say that part of my life, I did shut down. Mm -hmm. I did shut it down. That was my way of, of coping with it. Um, I was very fortuitous in the fact that I actually, my, when I met my husband, not long after uh, I'd finished at music college, he's actually a musician, he's a composer. So he's very in the music world. We have a piano at home. So it was never like that world was completely shut off to me he, that was, was kind of still of all around not. but I just wasn't using using my voice um so you know what happened was I was like well I've, I've been in the music world I'm this career isn't where I'm going I better go I, I remember thinking I better find a job I better go find a, a, no, a normal job yeah yeah let's give up <laughs> let's give up the calling yeah. let's give up the passion let's just go find a job let's go find a job um so that's what I did um, <laughs> I got in I did get into the corporate world for a while mm -hmm. uh, I was I speak French and German so I worked as a bilingual PA and um, for the director of international sales of quite a big company and <laughs> and I lasted two years two years I lasted in this stressful unhappy 
environment full of people who just didn't seem happy and they were just stressed and and um my my boss was quite i'm going to say quite a bulldozer so i was i was i found all of that like just too much and i actually had to i actually then uh left i was i was i was having panic attacks driving to work i i was getting anxious and 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 that really so that really wasn't the world for me to be in either but another eye opener another eye opener to gosh people are really suffering and i want to be able to help these people exactly another expansion another necessary yeah. step on the trip yeah um i love because corporate life and i lived in corporate life i will say it does not have to be like that no at all and i work with a lot of corporate women to actually transform that space and i know you do too now yes but the experience we've had that it wasn't for us. Now, one of the, for the women, because I love this, this is every woman's story too. Yes. So many times we're in situations and we survive for two years and it costs us, you know, mm. panic attacks and all this. How yes. much of that time did you think something was wrong with you that you didn't cut it uh, to be there? Yeah. Was there any of that going on? There was. I think I was trying, I wanted to do a really good job and please everybody. I was a pleaser and uh, mm -hmm. I just had more and more and more and more stuff coming my way. Yes. And, and I just wanted to, and, and, and I think it just was, I didn't think that I wasn't good enough. I don't think that I just think, um, I was doing, ultimately I was doing something that wasn't good for me. And this was my body's way of saying, hold on. Not that stop. way. This is, this is, this exactly. is this and it was bringing stuff up it was bringing things up that i probably needed to to work through yeah absolutely and a, another opportunity of life bringing that stuff up and for these women that are in places right now where they're experiencing work and they can tell it's not really true to them it's yeah. not really fitting their bodies are giving them symptoms. Their emotional bodies are giving them symptoms. I'd love to say there's nothing wrong with you. No, I would also it like It just that. means, you know, you're not really in the right spot right now. Yeah. But, but what would you love to say to those women that are in that space? What would you say to them now that you know? What would now you say to you working in that office for the time that you did? I, I would like to say to them that they don't have to stay there like that that's not all that there is if they have that if you have that knowing inside or you have that feeling that gosh i'm stuck and i and I, is there another way out and how can i get out of this and 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 you, you're questioning all of that i'd like to say that you don't you there is a way out Thank you don't you. have to be there and what, what, all it sometimes takes is that decision to okay i'm going to do something about this Yes. And that can be a journey that may and it will take time. It doesn't all yes. just happen generally like that. But if and, and, and I, I would say start looking in ways that you can, if you're in a bit of a rut, if you're in maybe routines that aren't necessarily serving you, mm -hmm. what can you do right now to to begin to make small incremental changes yes. to, to your life? And you, you, if, if a desire is there and you know, then you will do it. Yeah, the desire is beautiful. Gosh, we've got so many topics. We could do whole podcasts on it. <laughs> but that desire, that that whisper, I mean, one of the one of the things that is that every little whisper is not wrong. And I think it's so important for women to know that mm -hmm. is that every feeling they are feeling is not there to torment them. It's there to show them something. It is there to serve them. Yeah. And uh, sometimes we need courage because we've taken leaps change yeah. careers um, yes. so we know we know what yeah. that takes to take and I love that you know that yeah it takes a lot of strength but you all have it I believe they all, everyone has it everyone has the strength mm -hmm. I totally agree we have the strength mm -hmm. and what we do need sometimes is just the right support systems to help us yeah find our way quicker which yeah. is what we have been to do exactly um one of the so you, you got out of the corporate, it lasted two yes. years, and then what did you do? So then, <laughs> I know, so there I was having to recuperate, actually, you know, um, recuperate from the stress, recuperate from the anxiety, and 
actually in the, when I'd been in the singing world, I had come across, you know, the holistic side of things. Um, and I actually thought, do you know what? I'm going to train as a massage therapist. I want to help people. I want to help with people with their stress and, and I want to do something for me. So I actually trained as a massage therapist. And that's how my journey began more into, let's say the spiritual energy side of things. That was my way in. I think because I come from a background where spirituality, um, uh, healing, any of that type of thing really was never, wasn't really spoken about. And it just wasn't something that was at, really believed in, I suppose. So for me to go in through massage was a really safe way because I, in, in that time, people under, you can understand massage, you know, it, it's, mm -hmm. it's helpful on a physical level. Yes. Um, and so it was my way in, but then I was introduced, you know, I was introduced to more energy healing things through that. I was introduced to lots of different people and different modalities. But I stayed with the massage for quite a while, but really, really realizing that actually I had some unique gifts with this. I had a lot of intuition. I had a lot of just knowing where people were struggling and, and what was going on. And and it was it was a it was beautiful for, for quite a few years. But I, I realized as I was coming up to my 40s that me in a room, just me in a room doing this is not enough. There's there's more. I am meant to be doing and actually coming up to my 40s I came I then came across this moment of what have I achieved I've not achieved anything with my life moments of judging myself moments of um really sort of comparing myself to my peers and thinking well I've not achieved anything and a real moment of 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 dip, another low I would say a real dip in my in my energy and there was a lot of crying there was a lot of emotional releasing and there was a lot of okay um and i remember having a conversation with my husband about it he's just brilliant and i remember i was in the kitchen and i was crying and we, this had been going on for a while and i remember he said to me he said rachel do you really want to change he said because from where I'm looking, it doesn't seem like it. Because we kept having these conversations and nothing was happening, and it and and it was quite a harsh thing for me to hear. Like, do you, do, does because he was like saying it doesn't seem like you want to change because we keep having this conversation and nothing is happening. And I thought, oh okay. And I thought actually, and that moment, it was in that moment I went, yes, I want to change. I want things to be different. And that is what really escalated me to go to go deeper into myself, to really begin to heal my limitations, my beliefs, a lot of my own fears and anxieties that I had. And in doing so, it allowed me to step into my, all my gifts. Because as I was releasing, I was opening. If, if that makes sense. <laughs> yes, it makes every sense in the world. And, um, that is why I really invited you, you know, because we had been on a course together. We connected. Yeah. Uh, of all the people there, of the, I, I, there was just the spotlight on you that my attention kept being drawn on you. And then uh, all of a sudden, you when you when you'd comment on my stuff, or you'd add your comments as a colleague, as a sister, there was this this genuine presence, this mastery of communication. I was like, mm, these are my people. This is my people. I need, to, I need to talk to Rachel. And exactly as you've shared, like when you share it like that, this is the journey of the mastery to wholeness, to yes. the wholeness of you, the claiming of your sovereignty yes. and the standing in your sacred service. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So now would you say that you are doing what you were born to do in the world? I absolutely because I remember saying I remember um you know I had been I had been around energy for a long time and I remember just saying out loud I said okay I'm ready I actually said I'm ready show me show me what it looks like show me how I'm meant to be using all these gifts that I know I have I'm just too scared to use them yes um, and it's and it slowly opened up for me in a very safe way so I stopped yes. massaging I started just using my energy healing and feeling into people's just feeling and knowing what and clearing away what people were struggling with and then 
all of a sudden one day I just remember it I, I was with a lady who I really knew and I really trusted and I could just feel this in my throat hmm. and I said to her I'm going to start singing and these these beautiful sounds just came out and I and they just came out of my mouth these vibrations and I just went oh and and I just oh, oh that's this is what I meant to be doing and this is why I did all of that I went through all of that to be able to do this and I have I have the I hadn't lost the technique I hadn't lost how to breathe I hadn't lost how to make any sounds but there was no <laughs> there was no like pressure behind it of having to perform or make certain sounds it could just flow out as, as and you know with energy healing energy flows sort of I feel it in my hands I'm sure you feel similar yes. things energies flowing through you and but with the singing it's almost like well the energy is just flowing through my through my voice through my sound mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah and it's just evolved it's just evolved the more I've trusted it right trusted my intuition the more everything is just the more the gifts have evolved the more my insights have evolved the more and and it's and I've had to also and maybe this will ha happens to a lot of women put myself out there more like be brave enough to go this is what yes. I do put yes. put yourself out there in a world where you could quite easily be judged for this type of work but yes. go it doesn't matter because the people that I need this are people that get this and there are people that are ready for it and they need it and that's more important than my own fears of what people might think right and people that might might judge it you're okay with that because you know what it's brought you and you know what yeah. it means you know that it's your way of expressing love and yeah. supporting people yeah and i know what it's sorry i know what it's brought the people who i've worked with yeah yeah, yeah exactly right yeah. exactly right it was it's in, it's incredible what happens when we heal on the quantum level i mean even like in my journey i started with the neuro went into intuitive um uh, understanding but when i tapped into soul's guidance and energy and understanding that divinity and the quantum field were actually one and the same mm. transformation from the quantum through sound is completely science-based <laughs> they just have to catch up you know eventually there'll be like science yeah. and science is already saying sound first was the word yes the divinity yeah. says that and the um, and we are kind of pioneering this way, but there's many women. I love where you were. There's many women where I see we've got this, this journey. We've got these, uh, these chapters of our life that have unpacked and kind of fallen apart and fallen apart and fallen apart. Every time we build something up, it's fell apart. It's almost like this Phoenix rising loop. But then there's a certain point when we realize actually all of life circumstance, every second of the way, is asking me to explore the gift within. Mm -hmm. But it's almost as if our soul is asking us to become someone that we don't know who that is. No, I had no idea. I, I had, had no idea. No idea. Exactly. It wasn't shown to me. And, and I think there was a very good reason why it wasn't shown to me because there were things I needed to learn myself in order to be able to get there and, exactly. and and the the puzzle just begins to make so much more sense uh, you know exactly. everything will begin to make sense and even if you're going through a really difficult time right now and you're wondering why is this happening there's generally a reason mm -hmm. it is um on the journey we, we feel called to a journey in my experience of the 13 years now that I've been guiding people on this and still knowing there's a continuous journey because even now you found your gifts, you know what you're about, you work in your modality masterfully and that's all of the masters I've invited to this collective are in that space, but they have worked it out in obedience to the call they feel within and they now come, you now come with a very unique thing that is Rachel. Yes. The yeah. same as Neil comes with Neil, you know, he was a medium, a channel, and then the Akashic records. And now the, what he brings is so unique and so powerful. Yeah. Um, and every one of us is the same. And that's why 
uh, it's the collective. But there is still a journey for you, isn't there, Rachel? What's next? There is. There is still a journey. And I, I honestly feel like I'm just at the beginning. Like, I honestly feel like that. I feel that now it's like, I just feel that the the is limitless expansion and opportunities now yeah. open and i i really feel this calling to help people rise and almost be as i say for you this sort of beacon of light and hope for for to rise above the kind of like the noise the fear yes. the what, everything that's that, that's going on and help people see that actually there's so much more and we can we can rise above that and and that's that's what that's really why i'm here is to help guide people to to that so let us ask let me ask you why did you for your what are your reasons to have said yes to the woman leaders arise collective because i just felt i felt this connection with you mm -hmm. and i just felt this um this this is what I this is where this is what I this is where I need to be these are these will be the women that I can help and, and alongside you know alongside you and the other masters that will be there and I think this is will be a community of people that are ready to to go on that journey that you and I have that you and I have been on and any wisdom and any knowledge and anything that I can bring to be part of that then then that's why I'm here and I'm so sure that you will have someone to do bring. Um, because what I envisage for those that are uh, listening to this and thinking about joining us, this collective is about gathering of masters and not just 12 that are sitting in council as support. It is every single one of you. I have no doubt in my mind. If you feel a desire for something bigger of to be a contribution, it's because soul and spirit the universe love life god whatever you call it mm -hmm. in the quantum is calling you to be of service but there is a journey and there are critical lessons and milestones and initiations that must be passed yeah. for us to go so what i've done is mapped out a 12-month journey with these 12 initiations that i've had the just the honor to unpack from how what what is it that we need but it is it is not about look at me and Rachel and be like us it's like absolutely not we want you to be your most glorious happy balanced yes. nurtured incredible self who is finally supported to come into your own yeah. I find one of the biggest things I'm here to debunk in this program is in self develop in personal development it's about getting better and i am not better than what i was in truth i was always this much love in truth rachel you were always this talented right mm -hmm. what we didn't have was the complete acknowledgement and the the safety and the support to start trying out these things and really deal mm -hmm. with those um those blockages whether that's the shame or the fear that we all have yes. and not because we're broken, but because life is traumatizing. Yes. And they're just layers. And, and they're just layers of layers. shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're just layers yeah. of stuff that yeah. we can let go of as we claim our true divinity, as we claim our true sovereignty, as we claim yeah. our true identity. And it's, it's not about changing or becoming someone else. It's actually just about re um, as someone called it once, it's about unbecoming. So unbecoming everything yes. that's, that's no longer serving you just to be who you are in the first place. Yes, yes. And what I find so exciting about this is that I have, I've gotten to work with incredible people uh, for 13 years, guiding many women on this journey already and many men as well. Mm -hmm. But what I never did was actually teach people how to stay in the vibration of wholeness. Mm. so what is really really cool about this collective is not only do we have people like you and Andrea and Valerie and myself all of these people that are coming with their own modality of wholeness and supporting our different bodies but wholeness is an energy we can tap in now yes and when we 
as I often say, like we we're waiting for life, but life is waiting for us to bring our whole selves to the table. And when we do that, and when we're ready for that, um, it's going to be such a ride. Yeah. It is going to be so, and it can be done so beautifully. Yeah. yeah. And in so much divine love, it is yeah. not necessary to be alone. So I'm excited to start with you. Um, I can't wait for all the beautiful women that are joining us. And also some men who are on their sacred masculine journey will be joining us. Because uh, this isn't about a girl's club. It is about people that are ready for the true feminine within them to rise perfect that gift so thank you Rachel I'm so excited about our journey thank you thank you I've, I've loved this by the way this has been just a beautiful conversation it has it has and what a wonderful way to meet you and to know that um and to know exactly what this container is about I think yeah, and this is exactly what I know is going to support people and being with you in this, knowing I am still on my journey. There's no one here that thinks we're done. No we way. are masters and seekers at the yeah. same time, at all times. Fantastic. So I'm privileged to walk this road with you, my friend. Thank you so much. Thank you. And beautiful woman, I love you. We love you. There is love available for you. Those dreams in your heart, they are meant to happen. Claim them. All the best and namaste. See you soon, everybody. <laughs>